Welcome to a different series for the group Garage. To try and help a friend's daughter in college chemistry, go Royals, we are making a short chemistry video series on how electron orbitals are filled and a basic idea of the shape of those orbitals. So let's dive right into the energy levels of electrons and the subject of electron orbitals. To help us draw the picture of the order and process for how electrons fill the atom, let's first look at the periodic table. This time, rather than focus on the groups or families of the elements, such as the alkali or transition metals, let's look at the elements all in one row. This is called a period, and we can see that there are seven horizontal rows or seven periods. Danish physicist Niels Bohr had suggested electrons would have a quantized or specific amount of energy. With such quantized energy, the electron could only fit in certain shells, and basically we can look at each row as a shell or principal energy level. These orbits are not fixed, as Bohr had anticipated, like a moon orbiting the Earth, but rather the model predicts electrons are found in a certain region of space or shape around the atom. We call these shapes an orbital. With the elements highlighted by row or period, let's start at the very first element and see how the first electron orbital looks. Our chemistry tiles have the element name, hydrogen, at the bottom, the symbol H in the middle, and the atomic number in the upper left corner. The atomic number 1 tells us we'll have one positively charged proton in the nucleus. Since atoms like to have a net charge of zero, a neutral hydrogen atom will have one negatively charged electron to balance the positively charged proton. We know the electron is orbiting the nucleus, and as we measure the locations, we can start to notice some patterns, or rather generally see an area where we most often find the electron. Since it may be difficult to see a pattern, we can certainly follow along and begin to mark the spots where we predict or see the electron. Then, after many sightings, we can begin to make out the shape of the first orbital in the first principal energy level. The orbital is spherical. We call this orbital 1s. The 1 is for the first energy level. And while the s really stands for sharp, to help us remember the shape, for now let's use the s for spherical. See how the electron does not move around on just the surface of the sphere, but rather it generally occupies a given region described by the sphere. There is no defined edge. And with that, we can see that there is a set spherical region where we'll find the electron. Again, the 1s orbital. And now, on to see the second electron, helium, and the atomic number 2 tells us that there will be two positively charged protons. To keep the positive charges from pushing each other away, we have to add two neutrons. That will hold the atom together. The first electron, like hydrogen, goes in the 1s orbital. We can add the second electron to the 1s orbital if we understand a property called spin. Electrons appear to be spinning, like on an axis like the Earth, and its direction determines if it's spin up or spin down. The Australian physicist Wolfgang Pauli is known for the Pauli exclusion principle, which for us today will boil down to, for two electrons to be in the same orbital, they must have different spin. Again, we can make out the spherical shape of the principal energy level, N1, and the 1s orbital. Because of the Pauli exclusion principle, we know that the most electrons we can have in one orbital is two. Still, the electrons are not just on the surface, but more in a cloud or region described by a sphere. Again, no hard defined edge. Here we're showing the spherical region about the nucleus where two electrons would be 90% of the time, the 1s orbital. Now that we have covered the 1s orbital, you may have seen, and now hopefully you can understand, why some periodic tables have the helium atom on the left side of the table in group 2 column. As you look at the table, the group 1 column, that is hydrogen and the alkali family, this always represents the first electron in the energy shell. The helium and the alkali earth family represent the second electron in the nth period. Remember, each period is a new principal energy level. n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4, n equals 5, n equals 6, n equals 7. And the first two elements are in the s orbital. The common reason helium is found on the right side is because it is a noble gas. And for noble gases, the outer shell is full, like helium. Hopefully with this video, you have seen how the first principal energy level, n1, has two and only two electrons, with opposite spins in the first subshell we call s and understand that electrons do not orbit in a fixed path, but are found anywhere within a described region. And in this case, the 1s, it's a region that looks like a sphere.
In our next video, we will cover the second principal energy level, N2, and describe the electron structure for the first two groups, or columns in that period, lithium and beryllium, the 2S shell. And then later, we'll start to fill in the next subshell we call P. We hope to see you in that video, and if you like these videos, please give them a thumbs up or a comment down below, and help the channel grow by telling a friend or becoming a subscriber.